How are you guys doing? Today is Thursday, December 22nd, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I am going to review yesterday's Elite matchups and performances from Wednesday, December 21st, and I will preview everything that's going on today as we navigate the world of sports one day at a time. Starting off with what's going on in college football's bowl season, the only bowl game that was played yesterday was the R&L Carriers New Orleans Bowl, as unranked Western Kentucky would face off against unranked South Alabama. This matchup would see Western Kentucky take a 13 or 31 to 3 lead in the first half, as South Alabama would outscore Western Kentucky 20 to 13 in the second half. Western Kentucky would win it 44 to 23 by three touchdowns after they scored the first. 24 points of this game. On the losing end of this matchup, the South Alabama Jaguars would be led out by their starting quarterback, Carter Bradley. Their senior quarterback from Jacksonville, Florida, would end up throwing for 360 yards as he threw three touchdowns and two interceptions. South Alabama's leading receiver would be Devin Voisin, as their junior from Crestview, Florida, would finish with a total of 11 receptions for 153 yards as he had a receiving touchdown. South Alabama would be led in tackles by C.J. Thompson. Their senior safety out of Tulsa, Oklahoma would finish with seven total tackles. Yam Banks would finish with the team's lone interception as he had five tackles. On the winning end of this matchup, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers would be led out by their starting quarterback, Austin Reed. Their senior from St. Augustine Beach, Florida would go on and throw for 497 yards as he threw four touchdowns and an interception. His 25 yards on the ground would give him 522 total yards of offense. Western Kentucky's leading rusher would be Marquis Stepp. Stepp, their junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, would rush for 63 yards. And then uh, their second, or I guess their leading receiver, Dalvin Smith, had six receptions for 145 yards as he had a receiving touchdown. He also threw for 25 yards, which gives him 170 yards of total offense. Western Kentucky's second leading receiver, Jalen Hall, their senior from Maycomb, Michigan, would finish with over 100 yards. He had nine receptions for 138 yards and a touchdown. Malachi Corley, Western Kentucky sophomore receiver from Orange City, Florida, would finish with 11 receptions for 114 yards and two touchdowns. Western Kentucky's leading tackler would be Derek Smith. He would go on and, or I guess their senior linebacker from Jacksonville would finish with nine total tackles on the day. The team had two interceptions. One of them went to Caleb Oliver as Caleb Oliver had a tackle. Upton Stout, um, Western Kentucky's freshman DB from Houston, would finish with um, eight tackles as he had half a tackle for loss and the other interception for the team. Jacquees Evans would finish with six tackles as he had two and a half tackles for loss and a sack. And Darion Goodrum would finish with three tackles as he had a sack and a half as well as a tackle for loss and a half. With this win in this bowl game, Western Kentucky will finish their season with a 9-5 record. After finishing their conference with a 6-2 record to end the year. So that's how they finish it. And with this loss, the unranked South Alabama Jaguars would finish their season with a 10-3 record. After having finished with a 7-1 record in the Sun Belt this season. Of course, segueing into what's going on today, there is only one bowl game taking place today. As at 7.30 tonight on ESPN, unranked Air Force is going to face off against unranked Baylor in the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. Segwaying into college basketball, the highest ranked college basketball team to play yesterday would be the number one ranked Purdue Boilermakers. They would host the unranked New Orleans Privateers and they would win this game by 21 points. They won it 74 to 53 after they outscored New Orleans by 20 in the first half. On the winning end, the top ranked Boilermakers would be led in scoring by their freshman by their forward off the bench, Trey Kaufman Wren. Their freshman out of Sellersburg, Indiana, would finish with 20 four points in 26 minutes. He shot eight for 10 from the field and eight for 10 from the free throw line. With this win, top ranked Purdue is 12 and 0 this season. And with this loss, unranked New Orleans is holding on to a three and eight record this year. Looking at the third ranked team in the nation, the Houston Cougars would host the unranked McNeese Cowboys. 
the Houston Cougars would win this matchup 83-44. to They won this game by 39 points after they would outscore the Cowboys by 23 in the first half, and then, of course, 16 in the second half on the losing end of this matchup. Or I guess the winning end, I'm sorry. The third-ranked Houston Cougars were led in scoring by their forward off the bench, Javier Francis. Their sophomore from, Louisi- from New Orleans, Louisiana, would finish with 23 points, and 13 rebounds in 26 minutes. He would shoot nine for nine from the field as he made five of his 10 free throws all day. With this win, the third ranked Houston Cougars are 12 and one this year. And with this loss, unranked McNeese is three and 10 so far. Looking at the seventh ranked team in the nation, the Texas Longhorns would host the unranked Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Texas would beat the Raging Cajuns 100 to 72. They won this game by 28 at home after outscoring the Raging Cajuns agents by 22 in the first half. On the winning end of this matchup, 7th ranked Texas would be led in scoring by their guard off the bench, Arterio Morris. Their freshman from the city of Dallas would finish with 25 points in 17 minutes. He would shoot 9 for 11 from the field, 5 for 7 from 3, and he would make both of his free throws on the night. With this win, 7th ranked Texas is holding on to a 10-1 record, and with this loss, unranked Louisiana is now holding on to a 10-2 record. Looking out to the 8th ranked team in the nation, the Tennessee Volunteers would host the unranked Austin P. Governors. Tennessee would end up winning this matchup 86-44. to They won this game by 42 points after outscoring Austin P. by 30 in the first half, more than doubling their output, and then 12 in the second. On the winning end of this matchup, the 8th ranked Volunteers would be led in scoring by their starting forward, Olivier Nkamwa. Their senior from Finland would finish with a total of 20 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 steals in 24 minutes. He shot 9 for 11 from the field and 2 for 3 from the free throw line. With this win, 8th ranked Tennessee is holding on to a 10-2 record. As with this loss, unranked Austin P is holding on to a 6-7 record. Moving on to number 10, the Arkansas Razorbacks would host the unranked UNC Asheville Bulldogs. Arkansas would win this game 85-51. They would win this game by 34 points after outscoring the Bulldogs by 20 in the first half. On the winning end of this matchup, the 10th ranked Razorbacks would be led in scoring by their forward off the bench, Jalen Graham. Their senior from Phoenix, Arizona would finish with a total of 16 points and two steals in 19 minutes. He shot eight for 10 from the field. With this win at home, the 10th ranked Arkansas Razorbacks are now holding on to an 11 and one record. And with this loss, unranked UNC Asheville is holding on to a record of eight and five this year. Looking at the 13th ranked team in the nation, the UCLA Bruins would host the unranked UC Davis Aggies. UCLA would end up beating UC Davis 81-54. They won this game by 27 points after they outscored the Aggies by 12 in the first half and then by 15 in the second. On the winning end of this matchup, the 13th ranked UCLA Bruins would be led in scoring by their starting guard, Jalen Clark. Their junior from Riverside, California would finish with a total of 18 points, 11 rebounds, and a couple of steals in 34 minutes. He shot 7 for 14 from the field, 1 for 2 from 3, as he made all three of his free throw attempts. With this win, 13th ranked UCLA is 11-2 this season, and with this loss, Unranked UC Davis is holding on to a 7-5 record. Looking at the 19th ranked team of the nation, the Kentucky Wildcats would host the unranked Florida A&M Rattlers. Kentucky would win this game 88-68 at home. They won by 20 after they would outscore FAMU by 10 in both halves. On the winning end of this matchup, 19th ranked Kentucky would be led in scoring by their starting guard, Kaysen Wallace. Their freshman from Dallas, Texas would finish with 27 points, 9 assists and 4 steals in 31 minutes. He would shoot 10 for 15 from the field, 5 for 6 from 3, and he would make 2 of his 5 free throws on the day. With this win, 19th ranked Kentucky is 8-3 and three as they are undefeated at home so far. With this loss, unranked Florida A&M is holding on to a record of 2-8 and eight so far. Um, taking a look at the 20th ranked team of the nation, the TCU Horned Frogs would go to Utah to face off against the unranked Utes. TCU would beat Utah 75-71 to after they would outscore Utah by 6 in the first half. 20th ranked TCU would be led in scoring by their starting forward, Emmanuel Miller. 
Their senior from Scarborough, Ontario, would finish with 21 points and 7 rebounds, as well as 2 steals in 31 minutes. He would shoot 9 for 14 from the field. He made both of his 3-point attempts as he's 1 for 3 from the free throw line. And with this win, the 20th ranked TCU Horned Frogs are 10-1 and this season. With this loss, unranked Utah is now 9-4. and Looking at the 21st ranked team in the nation, the highest ranked team to lose yesterday would be the 21st ranked Virginia Tech Hokies. Virginia Tech would face off against unranked Boston College as Boston College would win it in overtime 70-65. to Boston College would force overtime by outscoring Virginia Tech by 5 in the second half. They would outscore Virginia Tech 11-6 to in the overtime period. On the losing end of this matchup, 21st ranked Virginia Tech would be led in scoring by their starting forward J Justin Mutz as well as their starting guard Sean Padula. Mutz had 18 points, 8 rebounds, 2 steals, 2 blocks, and 5 Five turnovers in 41 minutes. He shot 9 for 17 from the field. Sean Padula finished with 18 points and 5 assists as he fouled out in 44 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 16 from the field as he made all three of his free throws. On the winning end of this matchup, unranked Boston College would be led in scoring by their starting guard, Makai Ashton Langford. Their senior guard from Worcester, Massachusetts would finish with 21 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 blocks in 36 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 15 from the field as he shot 3 for 4 from the free throw line. With this win, unranked Boston College is now 7-6. and six. They now hold a 1-1 one one record in the ACC. With this loss, 21st ranked Virginia Tech is 11-2 and as they also hold a 1-1 one one record. Both Virginia Tech and Boston College are tied with Virginia, Duke, Wake Forest, UNC, and Syracuse for the 5th best record in the ACC as things currently stand. Now taking a look at the 23rd ranked team in the nation, the Auburn Tigers would go to Seattle to face off against unranked Washington, where they would beat Washington 84-61. to They won this game by 23 points after they outscored Washington by 15 in the second half. On the winning end of this matchup, the 23rd ranked Auburn Tigers were led in scoring by their starting forward, Johnny Broom, and their star other starting forward, Jalen Williams. Um, Broom had 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists in 28 minutes. He shot 9 for 17 from the field as Jalen Williams had 18 points and 8 rebounds in 30 minutes. He would shoot 6 for 10 from the field, 2 for 3 from 3, and 4 for 5 from the free throw line. With this win, 23rd ranked Auburn is 10-2 and two this season, and with this loss, unranked Washington is now 9-4. and four. Taking a look at the lowest ranked team that played yesterday as 25th ranked Arizona State would face off against unranked San Francisco. The San Francisco Dons would destroy this ranked team 97-60 to at home. They would win by 37 points after they outscored Arizona State by 27 in the first half, more than doubling Arizona State's scoring output that half. On the losing end of this matchup, 25th ranked Arizona State was led in scoring by their starting guard DJ Horn, as well as their forward off the bench Duke Brennan as they both had 12 points. Horn would also add three steals in the 28 minutes he played as Brennan would add six rebounds um, in the 19 minutes that he played as he shot three for three from the field. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown San Francisco Dons, who are unranked by the way, would be led in scoring by their starting guard, Khalil Shabazz. Their senior from Seattle, Washington, would finish with 27 or 26 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists in 31 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 16 from the field, 5 for 11 from 3, and he would go on and make all 5 of his free throws on the day. With this win, unranked San Francisco is 10-4 this year and with this loss 25th ranked Arizona State is now 11 and 2. They, that is all from yesterday taking a look at what's going on today amongst the ranked teams at seven the defending champs fourth ranked Kansas are going to host unranked Harvard in Allen Fieldhouse on ESPN2 at eight o'clock on Pac-12 Network five, fifth ranked Arizona is set to host unranked Morgan State and then at nine o'clock on SEC Network 16th ranked Illinois is going to face off against unranked Mizzou in the Enterprise Center in St. Louis Missouri so that's what's going on there
Um, taking a look at what's going on at the professional level in the NFL week 16 is getting ready to start today as there are now three more weeks left in the season the seven and seven New York Jets are set to host the six and eight Jacksonville Jaguars as there are a lot of playoff hopes riding on this game so of course both teams are in must-win mode from here on out as both teams are outside of the picture looking in Taking a look at what would happen in the NHL yesterday, I'm going to start off with what happened in Detroit. The Detroit Red Wings would end up hosting the defending back-to-back-to-back Eastern Conference champs, Tampa Bay Lightning. Detroit would beat Tampa Bay at home um, 7-4 after, the, after Detroit would score four goals in the third period. After Tampa Bay tied it up, in the second at three, Detroit would take the outright lead in the third off of Elmer Soderblom's fourth goal of the season. The top star would go to Dylan Larkin. Detroit's center from Waterford, Michigan would go on and finish with two goals and an assist. Detroit center Michael Rasmussen would go on and finish with two goals and two assists as their center from Surrey, British Columbia would get the second star of the game. Tampa Bay's right winger Nikita Kucherov would get the third star as he would finish with a goal and an assist for himself. With this win at home, the Detroit Red Wings are now 14-11-7 at this time. Their 35 points in 32 games is the fourth best record in the Atlantic Division. They sit 17 points behind the division leading Bruins as the Red Wings have won three of their last 10 games to date. With this loss, the defending East Conference champs, Tampa Bay Lightning, are holding on to a record of 20-11-1. Their 41 points in 32 games is the third best record in the East. They sit 11 games behind the conference leading Bruins. The Lightning have lost their last two games and they've lost three of their last 10 games to date. Taking a look at what would happen in Sunrise, Florida, the Florida Panthers would host the New Jersey Devils. The Devils would come into this matchup with the second best record in their division, as with this win, they are now tied for the best after they beat the Panthers 4-2. They would, of course, see three of their goals come in the third period after they were trailing in the second. They would take the outright lead off of Yegor Sharangovich's ninth goal of the season halfway through the third period. On the, I guess the top star of this matchup would be New Jersey's left winger, Jesper Bratt out of Sweden. He would finish with two goals. And with this win on the road, the New Jersey Devils are holding on to a 22-9-2 record. Their 46 points in 33 games ties them with the Carolina Hurricanes for the most points in the Metropolitan, even though New Jersey has played one more game than Carolina. In terms of the East, they're tied with the second place Toronto Maple Leafs in the Atlantic Division for the second best record in the East, as they still sit six games behind the Eastern Conference leading Boston Bruins. With this win, the Devils have won three of their last 10 games, and with this loss, the Florida Panthers are 15 15 and 4. Their 34 points in 34 games is tied with the Buffalo Sabres for the third worst record in the Atlantic Division. They've now lost their last two games, and the Panthers have lost six of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Denver, the defending Stanley Cup champs, Colorado Avalanche, would host the Montreal Canadiens. In a game that would go to overtime, the Avalanche would beat the Canadiens 2-1 after Montreal was leading for most of the game after scoring in the first. After Arturi Lekanen would tie the game up in the third off of a power play, Miko Rantanen's 22nd goal of the season would give the Avalanche the win in overtime. Miko Rantanen, Colorado's right winger from Finland, would be the top star of this game. And with this win at home, the defending champs Colorado Avalanche are now 18-11-2. Their 38 points in 31 games is the fourth best record in the Central Division. They sit six points behind the division-leading Dallas Stars. The Avalanche are on a three-game winning streak as they have now won five of their last 10 games to date. With this loss in overtime, the Montreal Canadiens are 15-15-3. So far, their 33 points in 33 games is the second worst record in the Atlantic Division. They are sitting 19 points behind the division leading Boston Bruins, as they've now lost seven of their last 10 games to date. And for the Canadians, um, two of those seven losses would come in overtime or later. Jumping out to Chicago, the Chicago Blackhawks, who came into this matchup with the worst record in the NHL, would host the Nashville Predators from within their division. The Predators would beat the Blackhawks 4-2 in Chicago. Um, After Chicago took a 2-1 lead, 
Nashville would score the last three goals of this game, taking the outright lead off of Roman Yossi's seventh goal of the season in the third period. Roman Yossi, Nashville's defender from Bern, Switzerland, would be the top star of the game with his goal and assist. And with, I right guess, the third star of this game would be Yuso Parsonen. Nashville's center from Finland would finish with a couple of assists himself. With this win on the road, the Nashville Predators are now 14-13-4. and Their 32 points in 31 games is the third worst record in the Central Division. They sit 12 points behind the division-leading Dallas Stars. The Predators are on a two-game winning streak as they've now won four of their last 10 games to date. With this loss at home, the Chicago Blackhawks are now holding on to a 7-20-4 record. Their 18 points in 31 games is the worst record in the Central Division, the Western Conference, and the NHL as a whole. Right now in their division, they are sitting 26 points behind the division-leading Dallas Stars. The Blackhawks' eight-game losing streak is the longest active losing streak in the NHL as well. The Blackhawks have lost nine of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Dallas, the Stars would host the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers would beat the Stars 6-3. to After the score was tied at 3 through 2 periods, Edmonton would score 3 unanswered in the third, as Warren Fogle's fourth goal of the season would give Edmonton the lead. The top star of this matchup would be Edmonton center Mat- Matthias Janmark out of Stockholm, Sweden. He will go on and finish with two goals and an assist as their center Ryan as Edmonton center Ryan Nugent Hopkins would finish with a goal and two assists himself. With this win on the road, the Edmonton Oilers are now holding on to an NHL record of 18, 14, and 2. Their 38 points in 34 minutes is the fourth best record in the Pacific Division as they are now sitting nine points behind the division leading Golden Knights. They've now won five of their last 10 games to date. Taking a look at where the Stars are with this loss, they are now 19-9-6. Their 44 points in 34 games is still the best record in the Central Division right now. They sit three points behind the Western Conference leading Golden Knights, as within their own division, they still sit a point ahead of the second place Winnipeg Jets. With this loss, the Dallas Stars have lost five of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Anaheim, the Anaheim Ducks would host the Minnesota Wild, as the Wild would enter this matchup with the longest active winning streak in the West. Um, the Wild would end up beating the Ducks 4-1 to after scoring three goals in the third, after the Anaheim Ducks score the first goal of this game. Minnesota's go-ahead goal will come from Matt Boldy in the third period as it will be his 12th of the season. Matt Boldy, Minnesota's winger from Millis, Massachusetts, would be the top star as he finished with a goal and two assists for the visiting team. With this win on the road, the Minnesota Wild are holding on to a 19-11-2 record. Their 40 points in 32 games is the third best record in the Central Division. They are sitting four points behind the division leading stars as they are currently on a six-game winning streak. Their six-game winning streak is the longest active winning streak in the West. It is tied with the Carolina Hurricanes for the longest active winning streak in the NHL. The Wild have won eight of their last 10 games so far. With this loss, the Anaheim Ducks are 9-22-3. With their 21 points in 34 games, they hold the worst record in the Pacific Division, sitting only three points ahead of the Blackhawks at the bottom of the West. The Anaheim Ducks are sitting 26 points behind the division-leading Golden Knights in their division. The Ducks are on a two-game losing streak, and they've lost seven of their last 10 games to date. Last but not least, looking at the Western Conference leaders, the Vegas Golden Knights would host the Arizona Coyotes from the same desert. Um, Arizona would fall short, losing it 5-2. to two. The Vegas Golden Knights would score five goals as, or four goals as a team in the third period in order to come from behind and win this. Uh, they would take the outright lead in the third off of Mark Stone's power play goal, his 13th of the season. Mark Stone, Vegas' right winger from Winnipeg, would be the top star. He would finish with two goals and an assist as Vegas' center Chandler Stevenson will get the second star with two assists. With this win at home, the Vegas Golden Knights are now 23-11-1. Their 47 points in 35 games is the best record in the Western Conference. However, the Boston Bruins still sit five points ahead of them in terms of best record in the NHL.
in the conference they are sitting three points ahead of the central division leading dallas stars in their division they are sitting six points ahead of the second place los angeles kings the vegas golden knights have won six of their last 10 games to date as with this loss the arizona coyotes are 10 16 and 5. their 25 points in 31 games is the second worst record in the central division they are now sitting 19 points behind the division leading stars the coyotes are on a three game losing streak as they've now lost eight of their last they've lost seven of their last 10 games to date and of course that transitions us to today's nhl matchups starting off as early as 2 p.m eastern standard time the toronto maple leafs are going to host the philadelphia flyers at seven the eastern conference leading boston bruins are set to host the winnipeg jets who look to take the lead of the central with a win hopefully at seven is going to be the new york derby in madison square as the new york rangers are going to host the new york islanders um currently these two teams are four and five in the Metropolitan Division as three, te- three points separates these two teams. At seven, the Ottawa Senators are going to host the Washington Capitals. At seven, the Pittsburgh Penguins are set to host the Carolina Hurricanes as the Hurricanes are sitting on top of the Metropolitan Division tied with the Devils as well as they are tied with the Minnesota Wild for the longest active winning streak in the NHL. At 10, the Vancouver Canucks are going to host the Seattle Kraken. At 10.30, the LA Kings are going to host the Flames. And then at 10.30, the San Jose Sharks are going to host the Wild as like I said earlier, the Wild are tied with the Hurricanes for the longest active winning streak in the NHL right now. Segwaying into what's going on in other arenas across the country in the NBA, the first game that would take place would be in Cleveland as the Cavaliers would host the Milwaukee Bucks. The Cavaliers would beat the Bucks 114 to 106. They would win this game by eight points after they would outscore the Bucks by 15 in the first half. First quarter, I mean. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Bucks were led in scoring by their elite starting power forward out of Greece. Giannis Antetokounmpo had finished with 45 points, 14 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 blocks, and 5 turnovers in 40 minutes. Giannis would shoot 17 for 27 from the field, and he would shoot 11 for 16 from the free throw line. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Cleveland Cavaliers were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard, Donovan Mitchell. He had 36 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2 steals in 37 minutes. He would shoot 9 for 21 from the field, 3 for 9 from 3, and 15 for 16 from the free throw line. Cleveland starting point guard and former All-Star Darius Garland had 23 points in 37 minutes. He would shoot 9 for 19 from the field, 2 for 5 from 3, and 3 for 4 from the free throw line. With this win at home, the Cavaliers are 22 and 11. As of right now, they are holding on to the third best record in the East as they set a full game behind the Bucks. The Cavaliers are on a five game winning streak as they have now won seven of their last 10 games to date. And with this loss, the Milwaukee Bucks are 22 and 9. With this loss, they are still holding on to the best record in the NBA as things currently stand as right now even though they're one loss away they are the only team in the NBA with a single digit amount of losses in the east they still sit half a game ahead of the Celtics as they still are holding on to the best record in the NBA as a whole they've lost three of their last 10 games to date with this or I guess with that said, transitioning into Philadelphia, the 76ers would host the Detroit Pistons. The Sixers would end up beating the Pistons by 20 at home as they won it 113 to 93. They would win this game by 20 after they would outscore the 76ers by 12 in the first half. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Pistons would be led in scoring by their starting point guard and rookie Jade and Ivy out of Purdue. He had 18 points and two steals in 34 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 18 from the field. And off the bench, Detroit's power forward out of Duke, Marvin Bagley III, would finish with 10 points and 10 rebounds in 20 minutes. He shot 1 for 5 from the field and 7 for 8 from the free throw line. On the winning end of this match, Marvin Bagley shot 1 for 3 from 3. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Philadelphia 76ers would be led in scoring by their elite starting center out of Kansas, Joel Embiid. He had 22 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists, as well as 4 blocks in 34 minutes. He would shoot 6 for 16 from the field and 10 for 11 from the free throw line. 
Philly's former MVP, James Harden, would finish with 15 points, two rebounds, and eight assists in 33 minutes. He would shoot six for 14 from the field, two for seven from three, and he would go on and shoot one for two from the free throw line. With this win, the Philadelphia 76ers are holding on to an 18 and 12 record so far. They hold on to the fifth best record in the NBA, or the Eastern Conference, I mean. They are sitting three and a half games behind the conference leading Milwaukee Bucks. The Sixers are on a six-game winning streak. Only the Brooklyn Nets have a longer winning streak right now. The Sixers have won seven of their last 10 games to date. With this loss, the Detroit Pistons are now 8-26. and Right now, they're holding on to the outright worst record in the NBA as they sit 15 and a half games behind the Eastern Conference leading Milwaukee Bucks. The Pistons are on a four game losing streak right now. Their four game losing streak is currently the longest active losing streak in the East. It's tied with the Pelicans and the Rockets for the longest active losing streak in the NBA as well. The Pistons have lost eight of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Atlanta, the Hawks would host the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls would end up beating the Hawks 110 to 108. They won this game by two off of a game winner, um, of course, from Io DeSunmu to put it back in in the last seconds. The Bulls would have to outscore the Hawks by 10 in the first half, though, in order to get them there. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Atlanta Hawks were led out in scoring by their elite starting point guard out of Oklahoma, Trey Young. Trey Young had 34 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists as he had 5 turnovers in 38 minutes. He shot 9 for 24 from the field, 7 for 14 from 3. He would make all 9 of his free throw attempts. Atlanta starting power forward Anyeka Okongwu finished with 18 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 blocks in 40 minutes. He shot 8 for 14 from the field as he made both of his free throws. Atlanta starting shooting guard and former All-Star DeJounte Murray had 15 points, 5 rebounds, 10 assists, and 5 turnovers all in 40 minutes. DeJounte would shoot 7 for 17 from the field as he made his only free throw attempt. On the winning end of this matchup, the visiting Bulls were led in scoring by their starting small forward DeMar DeRozan. He had 28 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists as he would finish with 5 fouls in the 38 minutes he played. He would shoot 12 for 23 from the field, 4 for 6 from the free throw line, and their starting shooting guard Zach Levine would finish with 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists in 37 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 16 from the field, 1 for 2 from 3, and 5 for 6 from the free throw line. Chicago starting center and former All-Star Nikola Vucevic had 20 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists in 33 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 17 from the field, 2 for 7 from 3, and he would make both of his free throw attempts on the night. With this win on the road, the Chicago Bulls are now holding on to a 13-18 and 18 record. Um, they are holding on to the fifth best record in the East as they sit nine games behind the conference leading Bucks. The Bulls are on a two-game winning streak as they've won four of their last 10 games to date. And with this loss, the Atlanta Hawks are 16-16. and 16. Sitting at 500, they are tied with the Miami Heat and the Indiana Pacers for the seventh best record in the East. The Hawks sit six and a half games games behind the conference leading Bucks as the Hawks have lost six of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to Boston, the Celtics would host the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers would end up beating the Celtics 117 to 112. They would win this game by five after they outscored the Celtics by 20 in the first and then by eight in the second quarter. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Celtics were led out in scoring by their elite starting small forward out of Duke, Jason Tatum. Tatum finished with 41 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals in 41 minutes. He would shoot 13 for 25 from the field, 4 for 11 from 3, and 11 for 13 from the foul line. And with or I guess staying in their starting lineup, their starting shooting guard Jalen Brown had 19 points and 10 rebounds in 36 minutes. He would shoot 8 for 23 from the field and he would make both of his free throw attempts. On the winning end of this matchup, the visiting Pacers were led in scoring by their starting point guard Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton had 33 points, 
three rebounds and eight assists in 34 minutes. Halliburton would shoot 12 for 24 from the field, six for 13 from three, and three for four from the free throw line. With this win on the road, the Indiana Pacers are now 16 and 16. Their record at 500 is tied with the Miami Heat and the Atlanta Hawks for the seventh best record in the East. They sit six and a half games behind the conference leading Bucks, as the Pacers have won four of their last 10 games to date. With this loss, the Boston Celtics are 22 and 10. They are holding on to the second best record in the Eastern Conference as well as the NBA. In the East, uh, they are the second to last team to finish with a double to have a to get their 10th loss this season as they now sit half a game behind the conference leading Bucks. They have the same amount of wins, they just have one more loss. They are currently on a three game losing streak as the Celtics have lost six of their last 10 games. Segwaying to Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets would host the defending champs Golden State Warriors as Kevin Durant played against the team where he won two championships. The Nets would win this game at home 143-113. to They won this game by 30 after they were able to outscore the Golden State Warriors by 29 points in the first and then by another 11 in the second. They were up by 40 at the half. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Golden State Warriors would be led in scoring by their center off the bench, James Wiseman. Their former number two overall pick out of Memphis would finish with 30 points, six rebounds, and two assists in 28 minutes. He shot 12 for 14 from the field. He would make his only three-point attempt as he shot five for eight from the field. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Brooklyn Nets would be led out in scoring by their goaded starting power forward and two-time NBA Finals MVP for the Warriors, Kevin Durant. Durant would have 23 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 steals in 29 minutes. He would shoot 9 for 17 from the field, 1 for 3 from 3, and he would make all 4 of his free throws. Brooklyn's elite starting point guard out of LSU, Ben Simmons, would finish with 10 points, 4 rebounds, and 8 assists in 19 minutes minutes. He shot five for seven from the field as Brooklyn would have nine scores in double digits. With this win at home, the Brooklyn Nets are 20 and 12. They hold the fourth best record in the East as they now sit two and a half games behind the conference leading Bucks. The Nets' seven-game winning streak is now the longest active winning streak in the NBA. They have now won nine of their last ten games so far. As with this loss, the defending champ Golden State Warriors are 15 and 18. They're holding the fifth worst record in the West as they now sit five and a half games behind the Nuggets and the Grizzlies at the top of the conference. The Warriors have lost their last two games and they've lost seven of their last ten games to date. Jumping out to the other game that took place in New York, this time in Madison Square, the New York Knicks would host the Toronto Raptors as the Knicks came into the game with an eight-game winning streak, the longest in the NBA. The Raptors would beat the Knicks 113-106 to on the road as they won this game by seven after outscoring the Knicks by nine in the second quarter. They were up by 10 at the half. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown New York Knicks would be led in scoring by their starting power forward and former All-Star Julius Randle, as well as their starting shooting guard out of Duke, R.J. Barrett. Randle had 30 points, 13 rebounds, and 4 assists as he nearly fouled out in 40 minutes. He would shoot 13 for 17 from the field as he shot 4 for 9 from the free throw line. R.J. Barrett had 30 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists in 46 minutes. He shot 11 for 19 from the field, 4 for 6 from 3, and 4 for 6 from the foul line. New York starting shooting guard Emmanuel quickly had 20 points in 35 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 10 from the field and 6 for 9 from 3. With, or I guess on the winning end of this matchup, the Toronto Raptors would be led in scoring by their starting power forward and former most improved player out of New Mexico State, Pascal Siakam. In an effort which I believe would be his career high, but don't take my word for this, Pascal Siakam would score 52 points, 9 rebounds, and 7 assists in 41 minutes. He shot 17 for 25 from the field, <clears throat> 2 for 6 from 3, and 16 for 18 from the foul line. Toronto starting shooting guard Fred Van Vliet would finish with 28 points and 3 steals in 40 minutes. He shot 10 for 24 from the field, 4 for 10 from 3, and he would make all 4 of his free throw attempts. With this win, and on the road, the Toronto Raptors are now 14 and 18. They're holding on to the 10th best record in the East. They sit eight and a half games behind the conference leading Bucks. They've now won three of their last 10 games to date.
with this loss the new york knicks are 18 and 14. they are holding on to the sixth best record in the east as they now sit four and a half games behind the conference leading bucks with their eight game winning streak to coming to an end they've now lost two of their last 10 games to date Jumping out to Texas, the Houston Rockets would host the Orlando Magic. The Rockets would come into this matchup with the worst record in the West. The Magic would end up beating the Rockets in Houston by six. They won it 116 to 110. They won it by six points after they, had, after they had to outscore the Rockets by eight points in the third quarter and fourth quarters each to outscore them by 16 in the second half. They even came into the fourth quarter trailing by two and they still picked up a two point win or a six point win. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Houston Rockets were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard out of USC, Kevin Porter Jr. Kevin Porter Jr. would finish with 31 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, and 5 blocks in 35 minutes. He would shoot 12 for 19 from the field, 5 for 9 from 3, and 2 for 3 from the free throw line. Houston starting shooting guard Jalen Green would finish with 21 points and 8 rebounds in 35 minutes. He shot 8 for 17 from the field and 4 for 11 from 3 as he made one of his two free throws. Houston starting center Alperin Sengun had 13 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 assists in 32 minutes. He would shoot 5 for 8 from the field and 3 for 6 from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the visiting Orlando Magic were led in scoring by their starting small forward out of Michigan, Franz Wa Wagner. Wagner had 25 points and 2 steals in 32 minutes. He shot 9 for 15 from the field, 4 for 8 from 3, and he would make 3 of his 5 free throws. Orlando starting power forward out of Duke, their former their number one overall pick from this year, would finish with 23 points, 13 rebounds, and a couple of steals as he had five turnovers in 32 minutes. Van Caro would shoot nine for 20 from the field, and he would go on and shoot four for eight from the free throw line. With this win, the visiting Orlando Magic are holding on to a 12-21 and record. They hold the third worst record in the East as they sit 11 games behind the conference leading Bucks. The Magic have won 7 of their last 10 games to date. And with this loss, the Houston Rockets are now 9-22. and They hold the worst record in the West. However, they hold the third worst record in the NBA. They still sit ahead of the Charlotte Hornets and the Detroit Pistons win percentage wise. However, they sit 10 and a half games behind the Western Conference leading Nuggets and Grizzlies. The Rockets are on a four game losing streak. They are tied with the Pelicans for the longest active losing streak in the West. They are also tied with the Detroit Pistons, who are sitting at the bottom of the East for the longest active losing streak in the NBA. The Rockets have lost six of their last 10 games to date. Jumping out to the Great Lakes region, the Minnesota Timberwolves would host the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks would get back up to 500 after beating the Timberwolves 104-99 on the road. They would have to outscore the Timberwolves by six in the second half to win the game by five. On the winning end, of, or I guess on the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Minnesota Timberwolves would be led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard Anthony Edwards. He had 23 points, four rebounds, and five assists in 38 minutes. He shot 11 for 21 from the field as he made one of his two free throws as well. Minnesota starting shooting guard Austin Rivers had 21 points and two steals in 36 minutes. He shot 8 for 13 from the field, 3 for 5 from 3 as he would make both of his free throws as well. Minnesota's elite French center Rudy Gobert had 19 points, 15 rebounds, 2 steals, and 2 blocks in 38 minutes. He would shoot 9 for 11 from the field and 1 for 3 from the free throw line. On the winning end of this matchup, the visiting Dallas Mavericks were led in scoring by their elite starting Slovenian guard Luka Doncic. He had 25 Five points, nine rebounds, ten assists, and three steals in 37 minutes. He would shoot eight for 16 from the field. He would shoot one for five from three and eight for nine from the free throw line. Dallas is starting small forward Tim Hardaway Jr. had 21 points in 36 minutes, shooting six for 13 from the field, four for 10 from three, and five for seven from the free throw line. With this win on the road, the Dallas Mavericks are holding on to a 16 and 16 record. They're sitting with um, the ninth best record in the West, tied with the Timberwolves at a at sitting with a win percentage of 500. Right now, the Mavericks alongside the Timberwolves are sitting four games behind the conference leading Denver Nuggets and the Memphis Grizzlies. As of right now, um, with this win, the Dallas Mavericks are 
have they've won five of their last ten, and with this loss, the Timberwolves have lost five of their last ten. So they're the same thing, really. That's what it means. Taking a look at what would take place in Oklahoma City, the Thunder would host the Portland Trailblazers and win it 101 to 98. Um, going into the fourth quarter, it would be tied, um, but OKC would outscore the Trailblazers by three in the fourth quarter, which would give them the win. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Trailblazers were led in scoring by their starting small forward Jeremy Grant. He had 17 points and five rebounds in 35 minutes. He shot seven for 14 from the field, two for four from three, and one for three from the free throw line. Portland's elite starting point guard Damian Lillard would finish with 16 points, two rebounds, eight assists, and two steals in 36 minutes. He shot six for 19 from the field, two for 11 from three, and he would make both of his free throws. On the winning end of this matchup, the OKC Thunder at home were led in scoring by their starting point guard Shea Gilgis Alexander. He had 27 points, six rebounds, and two steals as he had five turnovers in 35 minutes. He shot eight for 19 from the field and 11 for 13 from the free throw line. With this win on the road, the OKC Thunder are now 14 and 18. They hold the fourth worst record in the West as they now sit six games behind the conference leading Nuggets and Grizzlies. Right now, the Thunder are on a three-game winning streak as they have now won five of their last ten games to date. The Thunder's three-game winning streak is the longest active winning streak in the Western Conference. In the East, they are right now the Nets, the 76ers, and the Cavaliers currently have longer winning streaks than they do. Alongside their three-game winning streak, the Thunder have won five of their last ten games to date. With this loss, the Portland Trailblazers are 17-15. and 15. They are holding on to the seventh-best record in the West, sitting three games behind the conference-leading Nuggets and Grizzlies. The Trailblazers are on a two-game losing streak, having lost four of their last ten games to date. Jumping out to Sacramento, the Kings would host the LA Lakers and beat the Lakers 134 to 120 at home. They won by 14 after outscoring the Lakers by 9 in the second and by 12 in the third, by 21 in the middle quarters. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Lakers were led in scoring by their future Hall of Famer and goaded small forward LeBron James. The NBA's leading active scorer would finish with 31 points, 6 rebounds, 11 assists, and 2 blocks in 34 minutes. LeBron would shoot 11 for 21 from the field and 9 for 10 from the free throw line. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Sacramento Kings were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard out of Maryland, Kevin Herter. Herter at 26 points and 5 rebounds as well as 3 steals in 32 minutes. He shot 9 for 14 from the field, 3 for 7 from 3, and made all 5 of his free throws. Sacramento starting small forward Keegan Murray had 23 points in 35 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 17 from the field, 6 for 12 from 3, and 3 for 4 from the free throw line. Sacramento starting point guard De'Aaron Fox had 22 points, 6 assists as well in 30 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 13 from the field and 8 for 9 from the free throw line. Sacramento starting small forward out of UNC, Harrison Barnes, would have 20 points and 8 rebounds in 34 minutes. He shot 8 for 15 from the field, 3 for 7 from 3, and 1 for 3 from the free throw line. Sacramento starting power forward, DeMontis Sabonis, would finish with a triple-double. He had 13 points, 21 rebounds, and 12 assists in 37 minutes. He shot 4 for 8 from the field, 1 for 2 from 3 as he made all four of his free throws. With this win, the Sacramento Kings are now holding on to a 17-13 and record. That is the sixth best record in the Western Conference. They sit two games behind the conference leading Nuggets and Grizzlies. With this win, the Kings have won six of their last 10 games to date. And with this loss, the Los Angeles Lakers are 13-18. and That is the third worst record in the Western Conference. They currently sit six and a half games behind the conference leading Nuggets and Grizzlies. The Lakers are on a two-game losing streak having lost six of their last 10 games to date. Um, and last but not least, taking a look at the game that happened in L.A., the L.A. Clippers would host the Charlotte Hornets. The Clippers would beat the Hornets at home 126-105. to They would win this game by 21 after they outscored the Hornets by 18 in the first quarter and then by 13 in the second. They were up by 31 at the half. On the losing end of this matchup, the visiting Charlotte Hornets were led in scoring by their starting point guard, LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball had 25 points, 11 rebounds, and 12 assists, alongside two steals and seven turnovers in 37 minutes. 
Within his triple-double, he would shoot 10 for 26 from the field, 4 for 13 from 3, and 1 for 2 from the free throw line. And on the winning end of this matchup, the hometown LA Clippers would be led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard Paul George out of Fresno State. He had 22 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, 2 blocks, and 7 turnovers in 31 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 15 from the field, 4 for 10 from 3, and he would make all 4 of his free throws. LA's power forward off the bench, Nick Batum, finished with 21 points and 7 rebounds in 20 minutes. He would shoot 7 for 10 from the field, 7 for 10 from 3 as well. The Clippers' goaded starting small forward, Kawhi Leonard, would finish with 16 points, 7 rebounds, and 4 assists in 31 minutes. He would shoot 5 for 12 from the field, 1 for 4 from 3, and he would shoot 5 for 6 from the free throw line. <clears throat> with this win at home, the LA Clippers are now 19-14. and 14. They hold the 5th best record in the West as they now sit a game and a half behind the Nuggets and the Grizzlies at the top of the West. Right now, the Clippers are on a two-game winning streak, and they've won six of their last ten games to date. With this loss, the Charlotte Hornets are now 8-24. and That is the second-worst record in the East. They sit 14 and a half games behind the conference-leading Bucks. The Hornets have lost nine of their last ten games to date. And of course, finally, that brings us to today's NBA matchups. Taking a look at what's going on today, because today is Thursday, the only primetime game is going to be at 9 as the Utah Jazz host the Washington Wizards. The Jazz are currently holding on to the 8th best record in the West, as the Washington Wizards hold the 4th worst record in the East after finally putting an end to their 10-game losing streak. At 8 o'clock, the New Orleans Pelicans are going to host the San Antonio Spurs in the Smoothie King Arena. That's all I got for you for the NBA. Taking a look at what's going on outside of the U.S., going taking a look at what's going on with club soccer, the biggest club that played yesterday would be Manchester United as they were able to beat Burnley in the fourth round of the English Carabao Cup. They would win this matchup 2 to nothing. Their first goal would come from their Danish forward Christian Eriksen, and Marcus Rashford, their elite English forward, would score their lone goal in the second half, as with this win, they will advance to the next round. Taking a look at what's going on today in the world of soccer, just to give you a really quick look at what's going on there. Um, starting off with the Carabao Cup, Manchester City is going to face off against Liverpool as only one team can make it through. So that's going to be an interesting matchup. And of course, like I said, we're really kind of easing into the season day by day. But with that said, I do want to thank the ESPN, the NCAA, the NFL, NHL, NBA, and FIFA sites for giving me all the facts and figures that I needed. I do want to thank everyone for listening and I really hope all is well and I will catch you with more tomorrow. Peace out.